because of, is what makes a goodwill good, the fact that it accomplishes certain valuable ends. And his claim is you know. His claim is that we assess the goodness of a will independently of its success or failure in accomplishing the ends that it wills. Um, why is that? Because um, to simplify is what that happens. Okay. Sure. So in some sense that we'll have to elaborate more, something like the intention. So, so what I said before was a will is a good one when it what, wills the right ends, maybe for the right reasons or in the right way or something like that. And now the point is, and its success or failure in actually accomplishing those goals that it wills is not what makes it good or bad. So in some sense, it's the thought thing. Maybe it's the intention that counts or something like that. OK, so why is that? That's absolutely right. What would happen if this, the goodness of a will depended on its success or failure? What would happen? And in terms of the discussion that we've been having so far, what would Kant be forced, what would we be forced to say about a will if its value depended on its success or failure in accomplishing its ends? That something used for good will could be bad? Could be bad. If it, what if it didn't, if it wasn't successful. It right, so if it, if it, uh, if it, didn't succeed in achieving its ends. So assume, imagine that the value of a will depended on its success in achieving its ends. Then if it failed to achieve its ends, it wouldn't be good. And what would be the problem there? Um, This is a great question, and the question that you're asking is, how do we identify what those ends are? But we're not ready to talk about that yet. So if the value of a will depended on its success or failure <laughs> in accomplishing its ends, so you mean that the good will is only conditionally good? It would be conditionally good. It would be conditional on its success or failure in accomplishing its ends. And its success or failure, notice its success or failure in accomplishing its ends, depends on external conditions very often. Um, so it would not be unconditionally good. It would depend on whether it succeeded or failure, failed in achieving its goods. When we will something, when we give ourselves some goal or some end, and we try to bring it about, sometimes we succeed. Sometimes we fail. And our actual success, or our actual failure, often depends on things beyond our control. The circumstances of the world, for example. Sometimes we do whatever it is that we can. We try our best to accomplish some goal. And the world doesn't cooperate. And we fail. All the time. All the time. <laughs> but here's the point. That failure need not reflect any failure on the part of the will. Maybe it does. But maybe it doesn't. So if we will properly give ourselves the proper ends, whatever that means, and pursue it as best we can, that's what makes a will a good one. And our success or failure is going to depend on a lot more than having the right intention. So, um, I mean, you might say in that case, if we will properly, in terms of both the ends and the means that we take to that end, and the world doesn't cooperate and we fail to achieve our purpose, you might say the fault there is what? With the world, not with us, not with the will. Um, if it's anywhere. 
And Kant sort of gets a little carried away here. He says, I'm sorry, so that's the point I just made. If its value depended on its results, it would be unconditionally good, since we don't always accomplish the ends that we will properly, even when we will not properly. And in fact, so Kant gets a little carried away here. He says, it would still be valuable even if it were completely unable to accomplish it. It's, so this is a, 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 a magnificent passage um, that, that, that captures an important point that Kant's making. I have a little bit of a qualification I want to make about it. He says, even if by some particular disfavor of fate, or by the scanty endowment of a stepped motherly nature, this will could, should entirely lack the capacity to carry through its purpose. If despite its greatest striving, it should still accomplish nothing, and only the good will were, and only the good will were to remain, not of course as a mere wish, but as the summoning of all means that are within our control, then, he says, like a jewel, it would still shine by itself as something that has its full worth in itself. Usefulness or fruitlessness can neither add anything to this worth nor take anything away from it. Okay, a couple points about this passage. Um, the first is, uh, well, I actually, this could, this could either be read as saying that on a particular occasion we're completely unable to accomplish our end, or more generally, a will that, in general, cannot accomplish any of its ends. I have had my own doubts about whether, about whether that's coherent or not, in the general case. Okay, but certainly, um, certainly, sometimes we fail to achieve our ends. And Kant's point here is that that actual failure adds nothing or takes nothing away from the value of that will, the good will itself. However, notice, crucial, that this must be a case of willing, not merely wishing or hoping, as he says. And so, so, willing an end, when we will properly, that's, when we will properly, that means that our will is a good one. But willing is not merely sitting back and imagining some end. It's not merely wishing for some end to a, a, a occur magically. Um, it's, uh, it's actually willing an end. So now I need to tell you a little bit more about, the uh, last couple minutes, what he means by willing. Willing, he says, for willing as opposed to merely wishing or imagining or hoping, first of all, always does involve some end. When we will, we will some goal or some purpose or some state of affairs of the world. When we will something, we aim at accomplishing something. And look, and when we will something, we take that end to be good. We take that end to be valuable. We take that end to be something worth bringing about, worth achieving. So when we fail to achieve an end that we will, let's say that again, when we will an end and fail to achieve it, that's a bad thing. We have not accomplished the goal that we take to be good. So on the one hand, that's a bad thing. It's a failure. The world isn't as we think it should be or would be better if it were that way. On the other hand, crucially here, that failure doesn't make us bad. That doesn't mean we have a, a bad will. And that's the point he's making. Second point, so willing always involves willing an end that we take to be good, that we take to be valuable. And if, look, of course, and if we will that end properly, 
then we don't just take that end to be good. It is good because it's attached to a good will. Okay, and the last point is um, willing as opposed to wishing involves a full commitment to bringing about that end. So merely wishing something would happen is not the same as willing. Because willing that end is committing ourselves to do what we can to bring about that end. And in particular, willing an end means making ourselves into the cause of that end. Willing an end means making ourselves the means by which that end comes about. So let me remind you that you should not be thinking of the will as a part of the body, um, but as a capacity. A capacity to be able to consider the reasons for or against bringing about some end, and then the capacity to make ourselves the cause of the end that we give ourselves. And to repeat, the very last thing I'll say, uh, when we will an end, we commit ourselves to becoming the cause of that end that we think is valuable and good, that goal that we have that's worth bringing about and we commit ourselves to it. If we've done that well, if we've willed properly, then that end, then the condition that makes that subjective end objectively good is satisfied. And therefore, if we will properly, the end that we will is objectively good. And therefore, if we fail to achieve it, that's bad. But our will still is good, because I just said we will properly. And the failure to achieve that good doesn't make our will any less valuable. The world is less valuable, not us. OK, um, so uh, no class on Monday. On Wednesday, we'll pick up talking about the world.